All right guys, today I thought I'd do something that's a little bit interesting, a little bit different, and this probably will be an ongoing series, especially because I think some of you guys, more than others, will definitely enjoy chiming in on this. And today we're gonna be talking about a rate slash roast of my EDC. Now this is going to be like the definitive kind of edition of my everyday carry. A little bit ago, I did a all blacked out EDC. And once again, that video was fun. I definitely did rock and could rock that whole blacked out EDC, but it's more of a kind of, you know, brand or on point or, you know, trying to do something for an objective like an all blacked out EDC. Today, we're going to be going over what is honestly usually in my pockets for EDC and just going over it kind of in a lightning round and having you guys rate slash roast this EDC setup as a whole or as each individual thing. I'm sure there will be a lot of strong opinions and not everyone's going to agree about everything, but let's start off with some stuff that, in my opinion, everyone should agree with. The first one up is going to be my leather wallet. This is an open sea top sider. Of course, it's a quick draw, so it has my, um, so it has the ability to have cards in the back like this. And on top of that too, it's just an overall great, this is an overall great card based wallet. It's really hard to hate on open sea leathers products because they're so stinking good. As you can see, this one has seen plenty of use, maybe a little bit of abuse, and it is just overall a really fantastic product. It is awesome, and I don't think that honestly anyone in their right mind would generally or genuinely roast this, because if you do, you probably like Ridge wallets, and let's face it, you're dumb. Anyways, now let's move on to the next point that I think some people might roast, primarily because it's expensive, but that is going to be my EDC pen. And for the most part, as I've said in other videos, my smooth precision pens tie bolt is just my go-to. It really is not only very smooth, but I really like the way it writes and I love how it is a titanium pen. So it's just about as light as a plastic pen, but obviously robust as hell because it's made out of titanium so there's absolutely no flex in it you know like plastic pens they you know they feel flimsy they feel cheap this does not now that being said it is also you know over a hundred dollars so you take that for what it's worth and once again and once again, that will probably lead to some people roasting it because it's so gosh darn expensive. And to be fair, I will say this about expensive pens. The biggest thing, if you ever want to upgrade your pen, whether it's a cheap Pilot G2 or a really expensive titanium pen, honestly, the the thing that really makes or breaks most pens is actually the ink refill. And you can take a really nice, you know, schnitt, um, or sorry, a really nice Schneider, you know, insert or ink refill made in Germany and put that in a Pilot G2 body and it will write very well. Conversely to, you know, with the proper spacers, you can put a Fisher Space Pen, you know, ink cartridge in a, you know, G2, Pilot G2 body and, you know, have it write really well. And so the same, you know, moral story ultimately applies to pens as well. You know, what really comes down to making a quality pen is actually the ink refill that's inside of it and not necessarily the whole, like the body that bears it. Anyways, that being said, I still like my Thai pen because it's nice and it's cool and I just like it. So anyways, next one up is going to be my Zippo. This one is one of my older Zippos. This is, I think, like the first Zippo I got and I've just had it. just works and uh, it's nothing too much. It's not, not anything too crazy, but it started a lot of fires and, you know, it's definitely come in handy. Saved my bacon a handful of times. So this guy is definitely worth talking about. Once again, I think if you're going to rate or roast my my EDC, it's one of those things where it's like, you probably have a pretty hard time really getting after the lighter because, you know, even if you don't smoke, having a lighter for starting fires and emergency is definitely a huge pro. All right, next one up, and now starting to get into the more controversial things that you'll either agree or disagree on, is my Phoenix LD30. Now, I think Phoenix, as far as flashlight companies go, they've been in the game for a long time, but I think that, like, they're honestly so slept on and they honestly deliver a lot of performance. The LD30 has been my go-to for the past, I wanna say almost three years now, because it's just such a compact light with such a reasonably high output. I mean, 1600 lumens in this you know, package still makes me pretty happy. And I do realize 
there are newer flashlights, especially Nightcore, you know, makes some flashlights that are, you know, around the same size with even higher outputs. But for me, in my opinion, the LD30 has a really good beam. It just really works for me. I do have an even more powerful flashlight that's slightly more compact in overall length, but is wider than this uh, flashlight the LD30. And so that one, just because like the LD30 for me, it just feels right and it sits well in my pocket. I really, really like the LD30. It's just hard to beat this package as a whole. So I keep going back to it. I have, like I said, I have more powerful flashlights, but I just really like it. So anyways, now we're going into the official controversial segment of this. This is where you're either gonna agree or disagree, and this is where the real rate and roast goes. So first off, let's just jump right into it with the go-to knife. Now, albeit you guys do probably know by this point, if you've been on the channel or been around the channel for a while, I am a knife collector. I do like my knives. So the Protec Malibu is my choice for this video because I think it looks clean, it looks nice, it looks classy, but at the same time too, I definitely rock a ton of other knives but the Malibu is going to be the one for this video and once again you're either going to love it or you won't. Now I will say to the credit of some of my commenters I do agree that the out-of-box Malibu Edge definitely needs some love and I did reprofile my Malibu to lay back that edge a little bit just because I wanted it to slice better than it was out of box. So we'll say that is a little bit of a downside to the Protec Malibu, but being CPM S45VN, this is just an overall really cool, once again, blacked out, um, you know, Protec Malibu, and it's just awesome. I really do enjoy it. I think it's a good knife. I love the action. I will give it that out of box. It was well-tuned. It still is well-tuned. Runs on bearings, nothing to complain there. Now moving on, I have the defensive knife. So that was the EDC specific like box opener. This is the letter opener, so to speak, if you catch my drift. And now this is a little bit more aggressive. This is a Microtech Ultratech. Of course, it is a dagger edge, so it is double edged. Top edge is fully serrated. Bottom edge is fully non serrated. And of course, this is in the classic tri-grip pattern. This is one of my older knives in the collection, but it still fires, still great. As you guys can see here, fires hard and is it's mean. I mean, it's really mean. So as my defensive knife, so to speak, this is my go to defensive knife. So this is going to be it. It is not, like I said, the best of the best, but it is something that I'm sure you would not want to go up against. I'll put it that way. All right, next one up is going to be the multi-tool. Now, I think much to the angst of many people, I do still see multi-tools as a separate kind of um, option or a separate unit or tool as opposed to a knife. So I, so I still see these as different tools, you know, from a knife. So I, ultimately for me, even though I do realize like many people have said that even especially my choice, ironically, the Leatherman Charge has two specific blades on it. This is still a multi-tool to me and I primarily use it honestly for its pliers, for its screwdriver and for a handful of its other functions. But for me, I think that this is honestly probably the most drippy part of this entire EDC, just because this is the Leatherman Charge Plus. This is the long since discontinued G10 model. This is the Earth G10. So that means that unless you bought this on secondary or aftermarket, um, this, this is a multi-tool that you would have had to buy specifically from Sportsman's. That means Leatherman did not sell this on Amazon. They didn't, you know, make this a like largely publicized thing. You specifically had to go into or go onto um, Sportsman's Warehouse's website or once again, go in person and purchase one. So these are once again, limited edition in that regard. And for me, I honestly had to have one because I think that the G10 models of Leatherman just in general solve a lot of the traction issues that their metal handle, metal handle, yeah, 
metal handled counterparts do not. So I really like the G10. I kind of find it funny here now that I'm thinking about it that, you know, I'm ranting about, you know, how slick the metal handled G or the metal handled Leathermans are while I have a smooth metal handled Protec Malibu. And I will say this one is textured, but also a metal handled um, defensive knife as well. So I, a little bit of a, a hypocrite there, but to be fair, I really do like the G10 and I am a sucker for that in particular. Now, lastly, the elephant in the room, the thing you guys have probably been staring at this whole time, and that is the defensive handgun setup. Now, I do, once again, similar to knives, I do collect guns as well as a big shocker, right? Um, but so that being said, I have a few different options when it comes to handgun choices, but my newest one, and so therefore the one that's going to be most frequently EDC'd in rotation is going to be what you guys are looking at right now, and that is the Springfield Double Stack 1911 Pro Prodigy or DS 1911 Prodigy. And so this is the go-to for now and at least right now. So anyways, this is the handgun itself. Now it's whole setup as an entire unit is that I have the tier one concealed or T1C. Um, I believe this is the Axis Slim if I remember correctly. And I have it in, as you guys can see here, purple and blood red on the back. I just like that color combo. I thought it looked good. And um, I have of course red shot cord here, but yeah. So I thought this was a pretty slick setup and I ended up going with tier one concealed. I'm not the largest fan of their products, but they were the only ones um, when I was looking that made a sidecar rig that, you know, had a dedicated magazine holster as a part of a solidified unit for the Springfield Prodigy. So that's why I ended up going with this option specifically. And so overall, I think it's pretty good. I don't have any complaints with it. It works well for me. And so as it sits here, we have, like I said, the Springfield Prodigy. I have the Vortex Viper on here as the red dot. And then I have the 17 round magazine in here. And as far as ammunition goes, I'm running some very spicy 147 grain Buffalo bore hard cast lead bullets in there. And it is primarily for wildlife and, you know, uh, wildlife self-defense. And then of course I have a good old 20 round magazine right here running the same Buffalo bore um, plus P9 mil 147 grain hard cast bullets. So anyways, that is the setup for the defensive handgun. And that ultimately brings this video to its conclusion. That is the EDC setup. For the most part, I might throw a few other things in there, you know, on the daily, of course, have the watch, have the phone, but for the most part, this is the actual like stuff that I carry as far as EDC tools and toys. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Like I said, let me know in the comments comment section below. What do you think of this EDC? Either roast it or rate it. Do whatever you want. As always, God bless, and I'm out.